watch is so funny. Do you understand? Yup, it just gives a really deep sound. That's what it is. What up, it's your boy Chris Who you're watching Noisy Raps. So right now we're somewhere in Hollywood. Ever since growing up as a kid, like I was just super into like car, like tuner, like that whole whole tuner scene. Like I, I was not into like Lambo or Ferraris and shit like that because I felt like that was not like not really the streets. Like if you come from the street and you don't have a lot of money to afford those cars, you can get a tuner car, whatever you want to get for a cheap price. You can add a, add a turbo, do whatever you want with it, and beat the fuck out of a Lambo, you know. And that's what's that's what's like so appealing to me. This whole car car culture thing, you know. You can get like a Civic or whatever and make your own. These are all my cars. Basically, I was shooting a movie, it's called Triple X with Vin Diesel. And then obviously that's, that's where he got to me and kind of vibed out and I told him that, you know, I love cars and stuff like that. And then they just kind of started from there. We don't know what's going to happen, but if there's going to be a Fast 9, you bet I'm going to try beyond that. So right here you got two Jay-Z, Supra engine, pretty much the legendary engine that hosts the most horsepower. You got big ass single turbo right here. A custom intake manifold, everything titanium. The whole car is titanium. The exhaust, you know, from under the hood, everything titanium. Um, runs on E85, it, it's, it'd be able to hold a thousand horsepower easily. So it's a beast. It's a beast. Don't be playing around with this car on the road. You gotta go to the track, bro. Too fast. So basically, when you talk about car engines, it's either this one, RB26, or that 2JZ from the Supra. These two engines are probably the most powerful engine and most well-built engine ever in, in history, pretty much. Especially when you're talking about like Japanese cars, like, they are the top, yeah. These are all, they all have the nickname of Godzilla. Really fast cars, really dope car. Right hand drive too, same as the R34. And this one is actually 1997, so it's a 15 anniversary um, limited edition right here. Uh, everything original, everything, keep it pretty much OEM. Keep it that, you know, make sure it still has that timeless look on it. Yeah, this one is a very fast car and everyone should know about this. And this one right here, this is actually the only modern car that's here right now. So all these cars are back in the days, they're from the 90s, 2000. But this one is a 2017, uh, it's pretty much a brand new Nismo GTR. So, see how they're Nismo. Uh, the thing with Nismo is that they don't make it a lot, only probably about like 60 to 66 vehicles a year in the States. Um, you, what you will see on the streets are usually normal GTR, and this is a Nismo GTR, this is a tongue trim level, the price is about double. Uh, a normal GTR. So, and right here, last but not least, Acura NSX, also known as this Honda NSX. Because obviously in the states this is called Acura, but it is made from Honda. And this is pretty much they call the um, Japan Ferrari. So the guy that kind of kind of designed the whole car was actually a guy that worked for Ferrari before. And then back in the day, this was a really expensive car too, probably. Um, Basically a Japan supercar, that's what it's, it's called. This one's a 2004, yeah, 2004 model. So, got all the technologies, everything's still good, like power window, AC, all that stuff, all the goodies. And there you have it. I have pretty much everything, like, there really isn't much to get. I would maybe, I'll maybe lay my hand on another, uh, on a uh, RX-7 FD, which is a pretty uh, legendary car too. They have that rotary engine, and then uh, they're a very good drift car, and pretty legendary car too. But that's probably the only one that's missing from my collection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why I've been working so hard to finish this project and make sure that this was released, you know, like worldwide, and you know. There has really never been anyone to break through in, that, in a music way, you know, like when you, when you talk about like 
like like actors or whatever you think about Jackie Chan, you know, you Bruce Lee back in the days, all legends. But when you talk about like musicians, you know, that come up that that can rep China, that comes from China, you know, authentic. You can't really name anyone, you know. I started listening to hip hop music when I was around like age of 10. Really, I enjoyed it so much to the point that you know, at, at that early age, I was just thinking like, if I were to make music one day, you know, this is the type of music I want to be doing. Coming from a Eastern background, coming from China, I also want to bring that that culture out here too. So what people can expect from my music is that they can expect some very some new stuff that they have ever never heard from like American artists because that's what I can bring to the table. I'm bringing some like I, it could either be a song in Chinese or it could be like a song that's in English or Chinese, but incorporated with like a very traditional Chinese melody or whatsoever or a flow whatsoever. So you know, bring that, bring that taste. You know, because even nowadays when you look at like guys like um, like Migos or or um, Nicki Minaj or Chun Li, you know, like we're we're all like one, you know, in, in the world. And, and all this, like I feel like, you know, music can link us all, you know. There's this show called Rap of China, right? Uh, I'm one of the judges on the show, so they always been wanting to like do an audition out here and get some of the um, Asian Americans and bring them back to China. And then they, we just kind of reached out to Migos, and I actually, I actually met them the first time at um, M NBA Celebrity Game in the All Star Weekend. So we kind of know each other already. I, I kind of came up to them just to say hi, and they actually said, and Quavo actually said like, oh, like we know who you are, and we fuck with your music. And I was like, damn. Appreciate it, cause, cause you know, like it's always like, cause that's what I what I've been wanting to do. You know, it's like I want to, I want people to, people to hear my music out here, and I didn't expect that that would come from Migos. Like a lot of people be hating and shit. You know, like they be thinking, they be they, they be just saying like, you know, this guy's like so young. He's got like like, like we don't know like how is he eligible for the, for a judge of the show. You know, but for me, it's like honestly, I don't give a fuck, man. Like honestly, like cause I know that I know my shit. Like, I spent so many hours in the studio working all these years, like, doing music, and you guys just be behind the keyboard and just saying this, and you probably don't even know how to, how to, how to make a single sound, like, cut a single record or whatever, you know? Like, so honestly, I don't, I really don't, don't care. And I mean, everything works out, you know? And I feel like I'm doing this not only for myself, but for the youth and for everyone that loves rap music in China. You always respect old school, but still, What's the new wave? What's that thing that's gonna make everyone start singing? What's that? What's that thing that's gonna, that's gonna trend? These these things are very important when, you, when when it comes to like a whole like a very new music genre because rap music is still kind of new. It's been so underground. Not many people knows it. It's not mainstream. So I'm here to support my, these fellow rappers or whatever to bring the music to the to the mainstream for more for more listeners and more people. You know. Let's go to the studio right now.